All right, it's May 19th, 2009, 2.22 p.m. at the Morrisville Public Library in the Burke Room. And this is the Morrisville Fire Department Oral History Interview number 18 with... Danny Beaver. How did you get started in the fire department? My brother-in-law was a full-time fireman with the shop. At the time, I think there were five per shift. And they used the ambulance service and the fire service together. Uh, he was a full-time fireman and uh, had two openings, so he told me to apply, and I applied, and uh, that's how it started. What year was that? 1976. Okay. And you were on for how long? 22 years, and retired in 1998. Wow. Cool. Uh, let's see. Do you remember your first fire? No, I don't remember <laughs> the first one. I remember my first set of turnout gear. Uh, <laughs> it was back in the days when the fire service was uh, not like it is today. <laughs> and, uh, Pete Pennant was chief then, and uh, he was <laughs> known to be a little thrifty. <laughs> the uh, first set of turnout gear I had was used, and the uh, coat did not have a liner. The pants were too big, and the boots leaked. So it took several months for me to convince Pete that I needed to upgrade my equipment, but well, we made it. <laughs> yeah, Matthew mentioned that uh, you maybe have to wear several pairs of socks to make the boots fit or something like that. <laughs> yeah, at least two pairs, and then uh, <laughs> you bring the water out of them after the Yeah, it sounds like you need some rubber <laughs> ones, didn't you? <laughs> Those were the good old days. <laughs> Uh, how many people were on the fire department when you were there? Gosh, I think uh, 15, 17 full-time and 26 volunteers or somewhere in that neighborhood. Okay. Uh, what, what they did at that time, uh, the two firemen were dedicated to the truck. The lieutenant or captain was with the truck and then the other two alternated on the ambulance calls. So. They stayed uh, fairly busy. We brought the truck to the fire, and uh, the volunteers showed up and did basically the firefighting. Okay. Uh, oh, did you have a favorite truck? Well, back then, <laughs> there was not too many trucks uh, <laughs> around, but uh, my favorite's always been the 21 La France. And uh, I feel fortunate uh, after I retired in 98. I was selected to the town board in 99, and uh, along with a tremendous amount of work on Doug Nancy's part and being able to move some numbers around, we were able to get enough money to completely restore that 1921 La France to its present condition, and uh, it's really a showcase. It's, it's, it is. it's absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, you mentioned your driving story. <laughs> I may not should tell it. Well, I guess I can tell it now because Doug's retired. But uh, back in the uh, 94, 95, I can't remember what year, but the second Pierce truck that was ordered, a uh, group of us went to Appleton to pick up the, the truck. And uh, we drove a van up, and uh, that was quite an experience. And toured the Pierce factory, which was really an experience. And, uh, decided to drive the, well not decided, but we drove the truck back uh, to North Carolina. And several things happened on the way. We were in South Chicago and it's out of fuel, so we had to stop. And we, uh, Jeff Baker was driving the, the truck and I was in the truck with him. And uh, we were beside a McDonald's in South Chicago. And I really needed to go to the bathroom, but I was scared to go because you know, the, the characters around had their uh, uniforms on or their game colors on. So the only time in my life I've asked somebody to go to the bathroom with me, I asked Jeff to go to the bathroom with me because I was scared to go by myself. So he came on down the road, and uh, everybody had been driving, and basically I'd been resting and just looking around. and. Looking at the scenery, we got close to uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, Doug asked me if I wanted to drive. And, you know, I'd never driven a fire truck because the volunteers didn't drive fire trucks. So I said, "Oh yeah, I can do that." So we get in the, I get in the driver's seat, and 
take off and go down the interstate in a while. And, uh, road construction sign, I missed the detour. <laughs> and uh, we were past the detour sign before I could do anything. And the cones kept getting narrow and narrow, and uh, everything started getting quieter. We had walkie talkies, we were talking back and forth to the band behind us. And uh, all of a sudden, we got to a part of the interstate that was steel beams on both sides and one lane of traffic. And here I am in this brand new $300,000 Pierce fire truck, not supposed to be driving. And uh, hoping and praying I could get through it. And, and everybody was real quiet. And uh, somehow, somebody was looking at me. And I got through the, the maze of the road construction. It was so tight, we couldn't even, if I had wanted to stop and get out, we couldn't even open the doors on the truck. So we got through there, and uh, <laughs> I think Doug, Doug uh, finally got revived because he was scared to death, and we went back to Mooresville without a scratch on the truck. <laughs> I was glad to get out of the driver's seat. I remember that now that you mentioned that. I remember hearing about that. Uh, well, you didn't remember your, your first fire, but what's your most memorable yeah. fire? Well, I guess probably uh, with a lot of other people in Western Octo that yeah. burned downtown. Um, yeah. It was quite quite an experience and quite an all night event. Um, yeah. If it had not been for the other portals around and states were sending the school truck down, the main street would probably still be burning. But uh, that. Uh, was probably the worst one that I was ever in, uh, as far as duration and damage. And, and you said you was gone in it on the FCX, so you lucked out on that <laughs> one in the long run, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I think I was the only one that in the department that didn't get hurt or had to go to the doctor at the FCX fire. We were on vacation, and uh, luckily uh, I didn't have to go to the doctor and get x rays and get checked out on that one. Several, several firemen got hurt. Yeah. That was a dangerous fire. I spent some time in the hospital. Uh, what about, uh, I guess, the most unique, most craziest, most something, you know, at a fire or or a fire, any type of fire call that something was just out of place, something was crazy going on, just hard to believe? Well, uh, <laughs> we answered the call one, uh, one afternoon to. Uh, Temple on uh, spinning wheels over on the bypass, and I worked at the bank right up the street there. And uh, I, I got there about the time the truck did, and uh, Tim Deal and uh, Ronnie Town were on the truck. And I looked, I said, Well, you know, Tim's not going to be much help. <laughs> and me and Ronnie looked at each other, and we went in, and uh, you know, kept waiting, and nobody else ever showed up. <laughs> Fortunately, it was just a uh, motor had overheated inside, but. Uh, and that was sort of a unique, scary experience. I went around and not have any help coming. Yeah, because that's got to be a routine call. It was every month you was going somewhere like Templon or Burlington or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or answering yeah. the pool box alarms. Yeah. Well, I luckily I never had to do that. <laughs> uh, Halloween, we'd uh, go to the fire department because we know that <laughs> there'd be four or five boxes full of them and just get on the truck and ride. <laughs> it's, uh, it was good when they took them out because there were a lot of prank pulls on those oh, yeah. boxes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there were. Yeah. Um, oh, what did you like, what did you love the most about your job? What, what made it special for you? Uh, some of the guys have said the people, some of the guys have said, you know, uh, just being there and, and, and the camaraderie and everything, and then some said, you know, fight, doing the fires, fighting the fires. What made it special for you? What did you love about it? Really, I think the, back when I started, it was basically a family, a family affair. Uh, we cooked out, we ate, uh, we did things together, we trained together, and uh, we did a small group of, of people, and, and we did uh, things together, and we trained together, and we were able to depend on each other. Uh, it's the excitement, I guess, as you get older, wears off as far as the drill and rush going to the fire and the uh, 
that probably motivates a lot of younger firefighters, but as you unfortunately get older, uh, you, know, you look at the serious side of it and what damage causes to families and to homes and you know, things that can never be replaced or repaired. Or, unfortunately, a few times we did have some fatalities and you know, those things you don't ever forget. Yeah, that's true. Right. Um, okay, yeah, well, it's, it's out of order, but... I mean, <laughs> uh, no, when the fire department looks back on it 100 years from now, then they're looking through these oral histories and all, uh, what do you want them to remember or to know or to have fostered and kept going that makes the Mortal Fire Department the Mortal Fire Department, that made made it special for the town and everybody? Or That's a, a hard <laughs> question there, but I can, I, I still believe that Mooresville probably is one of the best fire departments in, in the state of the country for the size population we have and mm -hmm. the resources that are provided. Uh, we should be proud of the growth and, and the achievements in the past hundred years of the fire department. Uh, a lot of lives have been saved and property saved and uh, it continues to get better. Uh, the training course, uh, I saw the new recruits running their, their five miles uh, the other day. And yeah, I, wouldn't I, couldn't, do it. I couldn't drive five miles <laughs> like that. Uh, you know, the training is, is so much more intense and, and mm -hmm. the technology is so much better I think that probably Morsel has set an example, uh, not as a metropolitan fire department in Charlotte or Chicago or somewhere, but for a small town, uh, I think it's something that can be looked I mean, back in, in the future and we can all be proud of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's had very it's had wonderful community support and, and the community and both have worked very hard because we, we, we had heard stories about the old chicken pot pie dinners and raising money and things like that so yeah, that is something to be proud of. And not only the, the actual fire department but you know, the, the guys are involved uh, in so much more that they, they collect money for was it muscular yeah, MBA, mm -hmm. yeah. We yeah. still do that today. We the do the burn children's fund. Yeah. The cans. The cans. Yeah, yeah. for the burn children. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. I'd yeah. be interested, and Jeff Baker was talking about that earlier, that it'd be interesting to know how much money we've actually raised as far as the, uh, burn children through the cans and everything. That'd be an interesting time. I bet it would be a surprising amount. Yeah, I we, think it would be too. We owe a lot of credit to the late Ralph Clonger. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Ralph was a huge, huge. Yeah, many trips to Gordon's. He'd have a fit if he saw women and can't get thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's something that everybody has shared is that, that it, it's the, it's, was, you know, the, it was not only a part of the community, but it was the community, and the community was it. I mean, was the fire department as well, and and you just re everybody relied on each other and and pulled things through. We, well, we heard stories like when the uh, I guess the town something was wrong with the water pump. Uh, I mean, the water. Yeah, twenty one pump town. Yeah, pump pump water for the town. You know, they took it out and hooked it up and pumped it up. So, um, you know, it was that that spirit of all for one. Um, well, and all. Which is a good thing. Oh yeah. yeah. Even when Station One was the old Carolina Tire, uh, and Doug and yep. his crew of carpenters had on duty. Everybody's been a lot. Of, well, everybody's been every day their job up there. Mm -hmm. And so the volunteers came. The volunteers helped out a lot too. And painted and did things. So you know, everybody mm -hmm. took pride in, in seeking the same goal. And yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how it's changed though. It's a, Technology and fire suppression and training, and uh, if it uh, yeah. increases in the next 20 years, what it has done now. It's been amazing. amazing. Yeah, we, we were talking earlier too uh, with some of the others about the how with the community, with the kids going out and training the kids and, and, and training the 
uh, making the community more aware about fireness and everything, because it was remarked that the what the last fire fatality was 1995, uh, that um, which is a Amazing thing and a good thing, and, and that was of course smoke inhalation. I believe it was. Right. Yeah, so that, it's a, it's really come a long way. Come a long, long oh, way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Something to yeah. uh, Funniest moments. Yep. Uh, you any kind of gags that somebody played on you, or or you was a, you remember somebody getting a gag played on them? Some some fun. Oh gosh, I can't really remember. Oh, you just got to be. Yeah. Well, we asked that in Father Compton. He could just you could see the wheels turning his head. Which one was he going to pick? Well, you can expect that out of Bobby. I don't remember any real, real funny moments. Uh, those uh, full time guys were always playing pranks on each other and doing things. But uh, I, I tried to behave. So. <laughs> Danny's since Danny's a baker, you didn't uh, didn't have no counterfeiting job with PR, did you? You didn't help out on that, did no, you? But, uh, <laughs> didn't get no pointers, did you? <laughs> I don't think PR ever just got the machine again. <laughs> That's PR over there again. And it just went out my head. It went out. Would you do all this? Again? Yeah. Would you do it all over? Oh yeah. yeah I enjoyed what I did and had uh, met a lot of people and learned a few things and hope uh, I was a value to the community. Sometimes yeah. it gets uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sort of scary to just a you know, handful of people had a fire so we can, Yeah. We did the best we could do. And made it work. We made it work. Yeah, and it's grown quite a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah since then, which is a good thing. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, we, we, we talked a little bit. Uh, the, the riots were mentioned, you know, back in the 70s and, and all, when they had shotguns on the trucks for a while. and. Um, um, that was before my time. Yeah, yeah. So but before my time, time, yeah. The um, firemen were backup police officers. Yeah. They carried yeah. little um, airway 30s. You know. But there again, you know, when you only have a handful of people on the police department and on the fire department, they sort of had to protect each other. Yeah. 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 Do, do you think that's been lost since now that the town's gotten larger and that the departments have gotten larger? Do you think that do you, how do you think they're watching out for? We're not really watching out for each other, but do you think they've lost a little bit of that now that they're more separated? Well, no, it, it's it's uh, still there. But it's just not uh, able to. You know, station four and Station One can yeah. communicate, but the guys on the A ship, whatever, at Station One. Their team, yeah. it's, it's still there, but it's spread out differently. Yeah. Bigger area. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think what else we have. We can stop by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you doing the, you're cutting it out there, down certain parts of it? For the, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. I can't think. I think that's about it. I think we got. You got anything else you'd like to add? Or? No, I appreciate the job that the, the fire department continues to do today. And, yeah. uh, it's grown over the years, and uh, uh, I have, I'm proud to have been a member of the volunteer fire department. And yeah. Hope to continue to uh, reap the successes of the town and, and the fire 
service and public safety. Yeah. They, they do a wonderful job. They really do. Uh...